Welcome back to the Sea Law College Championships. I'm joined by father of Odd Orange, jungler from Maryville, Rob Ryan. Hey, welcome to the Sea Law Championships. First thing I wanted to jump off with was I heard that you booked the flights only for the grand finals. So you're like, semifinals, eh, whatever. Grand finals is when we're coming. No, we didn't we didn't want to see the semis. We were uh interested in just the finals. So um that's how much confidence we had and their ability to get by Winthrop. And uh so here we are. Uh well, one of the big tenets and reasons why is the relationship between Odd Orange and Niles. How familiar are you with that relationship? Uh, very, very. Um, I love Niles. Um, he's uh, been out to the house. He was driving cross country and, and spent a holiday with us. I think it was Christmas even. And uh, spent three or four days with him as a hell of a nice kid. And um, I know that they're just the best of friends. We were out in St. Louis. We got to run around with him a bunch. And so... Uh, I, I know all about that friendship and that bond. Yeah, well, it, it is it's certainly a strong one. And for you, this journey that Odd Orange has been on in terms of academy and to getting his opportunities at LCS, I worked with him over at Radiance back in the day, now over at yeah, Maryville. Right. Uh, he's been a trailblazing jungler. That means you're a trailblazing dad. What has this journey been like for you supporting him throughout? What did what, you say again? It was a trailblazing what? <laughs> a trailblazing dad. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I've always seen myself that way, but... Um, uh, it's it's just I, I guess it's meant the world to us. Uh, it's it's Nate's the kind of guy uh, Otto Orange is the kind of guy that wears everything on his sleeve, his emotions, and so I've ridden to the top of the mountain with him yeah. when he was started off in academy, and then to the depths of uh, yeah the depths just the depths, depths. Of, the depths of that uh, when that crashed out, and then who knew that uh, 16 hours a day on the couch would finally pay off, and he. Uh, <laughs> He, he, he said, I'm going to go to college. I said, oh, thank God. But, uh, <laughs> so here we are. So he, he, I think he's going to get a, a degree out of this thing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he will. So. Well, one to one on the final step here at the grand finals of the 2023 college championships. What would you say to him with two more wins left in the bag? What would I say to Nate? Yep. I was right there. Um, I would say, hey, man, just, you know, keep your head about you. Patience, I believe. Uh, I think he plays better with a little bit of patience. Mm -hmm patient aggressiveness, right? Yeah. Be quick, but don't hurry, what John Wooden used to say. There you go. All right, Coach Rob right here. Thank you very much for yeah, joining pleasure, us. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure. All right, let's get into game number three. We'll send it back on over to the cast. Here's Kangas and Cubby. All right. Man, I remember when my parents said, oh, thank God, you stopped playing. You're actually like going to cast and make some money off this thing. Oh, you know? oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a good moment for parents. Yeah, it's uh, nice. So, obviously, I don't want to a much better game. Get back with the crazy engagers now as well. But you know what the biggest difference for me from that last game? Oh, well, now the camera's not showing well, us. What was that? The fact that Bont Lane, we didn't highlight yeah. them as much, but they stepped up, baby. They really did. I mean, Scary Jerry conquered some demons down there, and conquered Shogo. I, I said in the draft, like, hey, Kaisa into Varus? That's a self counter pick. Yeah. And they cashed in uh, with the Varus plus the Ona. That's so much power early. I feel like UST took some fights they probably should not have early, and mm -hmm. uh, really well punished by Maryville as, again, they drafted winning lanes. They won those lanes. Odd Orange made good use of those winning lanes. And I think thanks to Get Back's turns later, when things got a little bit hairy, Get Back was able to get them out of those situations and make sure that this game went in favor of Maryville. So we always give Shogo at least one ego pick. Is that the one for the series, or do we expect more? I, I mean, I, I think we might see five ego picks today. Uh, Who knows? Uh, I mean, well, we did get Draven, you know, for, uh. for game one, so maybe we'll consider that two of them. But that was the biggest thing, was that he locked in the Kaisa into the Varus, got hard punished for that. Yep. Scary Jerry was online, and he just kept surviving in those fights. It was uh, That part was the opposite from game one, because Shogo was getting targeted and dying in most of the fights. Scary Jerry was just surviving in the two biggest engages mm -hmm. that USC threw at him. And I think that's really good that you highlight that because one of the changes that we have coming into this game is that UST, uh, they lost to get side select. You can see him now on yeah. the blue side for the first time of this series. So that buys a bit of big first pick uh, that has been in the hands of Maryville and Odd Orange. Uh, but we could see that swapped up. Uh, Zaya Rakan has been denied all these games. We could see UST take that for themselves as yeah. well. Uh, a couple options and also Maokai uh, has been banned a lot on the red side not just today but for this tournament that is still a first pick that even St. Thomas would consider running uh, if that is going to be up for them. So far 
It's been the Emilio Ban, Cassante Ban, Ooh. and the Jace and Varus from UST. I will say, Cassante Ban is very telling. Maryville is going to take that away for the rest of the day. Like, we've seen Cassante mostly be picked up on 1 2 on red side. He's going to hold that flex for the rest of the draft. Yeah. Maryville getting rid of that on red, I, I think it says a lot. Like, hey, we just don't want to deal with that. True. And Sejuani being taken away, that does tell me that we hmm. might actually see a Maokai first pick, as Sej is one of the picks that we usually see. Uh, taken into Maokai. So I think that's going to be the angle, but now with that taken away, Zaya Rakan, I want to see UST deny a side of that, and it will be that first pick Zaya for the side of Shogo. And Maokai was the one champion that in the semifinals Dardak got put heavily behind. Didn't matter, it didn't though. Matter. He yeah, was still able to control the jungle, control the objectives, and get back into the game. So it makes sense. Marivol do not want Dardak on that. Also, with Zaya being taken, this makes Vi, I think, a lot less appealing for Odd Orange, just given that you can trade ours if you are the Zaya. Uh, so, I think the answer here for Maryville, maybe we see a Wukong Rakan or just a Wukong Annie. Uh, okay, actually, just gonna have oh. Aunt Wayne Power Pick gonna be the Jinx response. My eyes still really heavily on Wukong for Odd Orange, but they could drop that. They could prioritize support here if they wanted to. Uh, but again, with Zaya showing, Vi drops yeah. a lot in priority, so Otto Orange is going to take that one for himself. And also the fact that you don't expect any of the supports you'll pair with the Jinx to necessarily be locked in with the Zaya. So, taking away the Wukong instead. And now, Dardock gets to choose jungle pickup. We are, of course, still on patch 13.9. So all these fun hovers, the Kha'Zix, the Rengar, not getting locked in. She's going to be the Rakan with the Zaya. Give USC a little bit longer time to plan what their next pick will be on... Robbie Buffs, um, Classic Zed, ooh, would love to see it. Ben okay. Said, I like the Gragas here because it actually keeps a lot of flexibility for St. Thomas. We have seen Porsche queue this up yeah. top lane the first two games, but uh, they did pair that with the Wukong itself. So you kind of knew it was going to be slow lane Gragas, but with Gragas showing here, this could be a triple flex pick for the side of St. Thomas. Going to give MU a lot to think about. I expect them to either take Annie here or they can just take uh, Thrash, Tom, Ken, something that they want in the bot lane, or also Nautilus. That's good against Rakan. You can stymie those engages, so sure. it will be the pick for Zyko. Doesn't necessarily help the Jinx survive as well as something like a Thresh or yeah. Lulu would, but it gives you more engage options. And like you said, the lane matchup will be a little bit easier now. You can see AD picks already being taken away, and that Annie that we mentioned. I like the Yasuo ban. What else are we going to see taken away, though, by the side of MU? If they don't want to deal with a Lee Sin, they could just throw a ban at Dardoch to want to get rid of like Lee Sin or Viego. They think that Karagas could be going into a soul win. You see the coaches on stage now talking. What is the game plan? Yeah, I got to say student coach Teach, by the way, yeah. uh, just uh, picked up his degree. I know that's been a big thing for Maryville. The fact that, uh, you know, they're being led by a student, uh, which is pretty cool for them. Teach has been with them the entire way, by the way. Uh, so he was with them in the run last year and uh, definitely a favorite of everyone in the house. Uh, giving him that mantle to be the head coach this year was a big difference for Maryville. And now Teej drafting across Alorum. Long storied career in the professional scene. And Nar locked in here for Maryville. Does Porsche go something a little bit crazy? I mean, Aurelia is a really good matchup into Nar. I gotta say, you can't really... It's hard to play team fights in the Wukong Nautilus. If you do want to go Aurelia, I think there's going to be a bluff of a hover. Uh, still expecting that Gragas to actually be in the top side, honestly, for Porsche. But if they wanted to get fancy, could take away a few things. But no. Ari mid, I'm still expecting that Gragas to be top. I think it's now just all about what Dardock wants. Is it going to be that Wee Sin? Oh. Or will it be the Viego for Dardock? I mean, we talk about the confidence of this player. You ask junglers, Viego turns you into the main character. Oh, Cassiopeia for get back. I, I got to say, Cass is pretty good this game. Uh, like, you can win lane against Ari if you do land some of those early Qs. And if you look at St. Thomas, a lot of them, they have to go in. Cassio, a little bit tankier and deals really well when you play uh, into Cassiopeia's range. It is limited, but if you have to go into her range, she is very powerful. And we have seen get back. Ari put wins on this champion on the stage. And all the champions that are going to be going forward, obviously, the Petrifying Gaze no. will stop them in their tracks. Like, yeah, I like to get back. has already shown in the semifinals his proficiency on this champion. And now, I would argue, based on how, you know, the, the conversation was starting with last game, the scaling advantage could be going over towards the Casio team here. Maryville yeah. do have this tool yeah. now to play through in these later stages. No, that's a good point. I think a lot of it's going to be about mid-game and that snap engage that you can pull off with the Zaya Rakan. 
a uh, duo that we have seen denied from MU. The first two games by University of St. Thomas, and then again, the third game by taking it themselves. And I love, you know, we had the interview with Dad Orange, you know. Uh, we know that Nate, Odd Orange, someone that does wear his emotions on his sleeve. Yep. Well, Dardock is actually wearing Viego's uh, sword on his sleeve as well. Is that, That's tattooed onto his forearm, so. The Blade yeah, of the Rune King? Yeah, no, he's gonna be playing that this game as oh. it is a comfort pick there it for is. Dardock. Dardock, so, show it to us. Nah, he, he's, he's locked in, man. Yeah, that's true. He can't hear me. It's okay. He got, he got a glimpse of it. On a signature champion. Again, like I said, this can make him the main character. If you're Viego and you have that pop-off moment, get the resets yeah. in the right team fight. You can win games on your own. Dardock looking to do that right here. As the coaches have shaken hands, left off. It's up to the players as we load into the rift for game three of the 2023 Collegiate Championship. Good to hear some folks in the audience. Actually, funnily enough, uh, a lot of the Winthrop guys here. We got Chookies. Uh, did hold the trophy with St. Thomas yep. last year, supporting some of the boys. And also, uh, Dardock announced to be the support of Mirage Alliance. You know who his jungler is for that? Chad Jungle in the audience. Someone that Dardock coached as well before. So, uh, great to see some of the players. Spyrax here as well. Uh, lost an MU in the finals, but they'd rep them. One of the promotions they have, 13 players, they've set the pro. So good to have a full studio for this final today. Love having the players, supporting the players in the audience. But let's hear right now from UST's 80 carry at Shogo and what it's like being that guy. I love being the man and the, you know, the target. Um, I know they're after me. I know they're big fans. They've been scouting. They've been leaking. They've been prepping. None of it is going to matter. I mean, he, he really has been that guy, <laughs> like eating the Vi alts, eating the Leona alts. Uh, oh, yes. The, the self counter pick with the Kaisa. Yep, yep. Might have tried to be that guy a little bit too much. Okay. I gotta say, might have to cool it off. But hey, this game. Maybe he needs to take a break and be this guy. Yeah, you know? this guy. I mean, does have this eye over Khan that does enable him to play very far forward if he so chooses. And we'll see. I mean, this bot lane has been very important the first two games in just dictating the outcome of the game. We'll see if Shogo and Dapshin can take advantage of this very powerful duo that they hold. Catching up on the jungle pass right now. Odd Orange starting top jungle. Dardox starting bot jungle. And we did see Niles walk forward, get to a lane a little bit later, but still get that warded down to spot where Dardock is. This does give a decent amount of information over to MU. Yeah, we have mirror jungle clears at the moment. Uh, with Odd Orange doing the AoE camps first, which I really like. It does help accelerate you to six. So I think Odd Orange is going to be playing for that early dragon uh, when he is wrapped up with that second clear. If you start top and go to bot, uh, you can get to that dragon around that 5.30 timer. So again, uh, focus on the bot lane. Going to be very heavy here for Maryville. But curiously enough, I want to see if Dardock wraps around. Uh, yeah. Oh no, actually just going to recall. So they did see the ward being dropped early by the side of MU. Dardock doesn't want to go around that. Instead, he's going to recall and go towards his top side. And let's pick up a long sword along the way. So if Odd Orange goes for the invade, he will have a little more stats and can probably surprise Odd Orange, who will see that the buff is still up and now path towards bottom side. So Dardock with a very fast clear actually won't even be behind at all for the Wukong right now. Nice turn from Robbie Bob there to also chunk out get back. Well done, you have to hit those skill shots as Ari against Cassio if you want to win this matchup. If they go wide, Cassio's ability to respond when that charms down can be very deadly. So Robbie Bob managing this matchup rather well. As this has been a big year of growth for Robbie Bob, player we've been pretty familiar with, even going back to you know 2020 scouting yeah. grounds. Him subbing in for EG along with Mobility, who we also saw uh, on the desk earlier today. Uh, really feels like Robbie Bob's grown quite a bit from that, able to take quite a bit. Uh, from what he learned in that experience back to this team as he has really upped his individual play. We saw that already in this series. Right now, pushing the wave and getting a little bit of a lead over the Cassiopeia. No surprise necessarily from the Ari, but when we look at bot lane, Scary Jerry and Zyko are keeping the shove in. Not necessarily the expectation against a Zaya Rakan. These are known to be a very powerful duo. Yeah, so early levels, Jinx does have the push. It's just that when you get all of your abilities available, uh, Zyra Rakan with that W synergy can do quite a bit, so it's kind of up to Zyko now to actually stymie the engage, uh, catch the W from Rakan. Uh, Daption does so choose to go in with that drudge one. Ooh, get back. Taking punishment right there in the mid lane as Dardot could look for a potential dive. Spotted on a ward, get back oh. did drop that down. And just delaying the back, so get back will miss some of this farm in the mid lane. I gotta say, this is a really impressive lane phase from Robbie Bob. Like, this save five pick for get back and this Cassiopeia, uh, get back. Uh, really got the better 
of Winthrop on the Casio game that they had. That was a very close game, too, that we saw in that series. Uh, the CM lane like this is really good. His adaption actually gets caught. Yeah, taking a lot of damage right there, but it's traded right back onto Zyko. Shogo with a huge feather recall. Summoner spells used as Ghost and Heal from UST's side. Maryville, they've used everything but Flash from Scary Jerry. Otto Orange is still hovering around here. Will Dardock join in time? This is a little hairy here as Daption. Oh, nice dodge. Crucially, they flashes are up, Orange. and now they see Odd Orange knock up from Daption. Dardock is here. Odd Orange could be in some trouble. Flashes yep. away. A lot of summoner spells used by Maryville, and they don't get much for it. We had Odd Orange actually skip over some camps, so he didn't reset again. He did those AoE camps first. Uh, Dardock was actually able to take away the respawn Raptors, which is really good for him, and then came down to fight, made sure he got these camps for himself. So Dardock ahead. And I gotta say, Robbie Bob as well, he did respond with that TP. Uh, this is a base where I'd expect, again, Cassio to, she's able to land those Qs and space the charms, can do well, but Robbie Bob playing this lane out really well. This is a bit of a skill matchup in the mid lane, and see Robbie Bob do this, I, I feel like it's a really nice evolution for him as a player. Again, Mr. Consistent, someone yeah. that we don't really credit for or no for having a great main phase. More like, hey, just do your jobs and teamfight later on control mages. Robbie Bob, his two assassin games in the finals have been really sound so far. Great start in the Ari. And when you compare that to Get Back and the narrative we've had about him yeah. leading into this, where he just was dominating late in the semifinals, really impressive, even more. Get Back has to back again, still doesn't have the lost chapter. He's gonna be down even more CS in the mid lane. And Robbie Bob is accelerated. Meanwhile, Niles in the island on the top lane has gone for the coal and is a solid two waves up over Porsche right now. Don't expect Porsche to be getting as much attention here. So expect that number to just keep growing. It's about a battle of the mid, or rather the solo laners for right now. And see Porsche, that adaptation in the Gragas matchup, making sure he pops the cask before he gets thrown into the wall so that damage still goes down. A couple things that he missed out on last time. Maybe Porsche, one of this matchup back, making sure that he hits a couple of those small mechanics and interactions that you need to make sure you hit to get the best of this matchup is Niles really put him on the back foot in game two but this time Porsche at least hanging in there a little bit more but at the moment looks like all focus going to be onto this dragon as control word drop will be cleared out by MU so we'll give UST first say over this bot wave as Shogo should hit five and it will deny MU from getting this dragon time you got the scuttle so they will know if UST want to go for it themselves, but it's just gonna be a reset from Shogo and Daption. Not a lot of action happening early game this time around, Cubby. Is this a little bit of nerves? Maybe we had all the smack talk that got out in games one and two, and now it's about you know, a little more calm League of Legends this time around. I think UST, like, I think they're really just waiting for six on Zyo Rakan to try and pull something off with Dardoch. Also, I gotta say, I, I'm not a huge fan of Diego plus Ari. I feel like, like this 2v2, the wave, it's, it's like really tough to hit skill shots around the wave. Like what I like about Lee Sin Ari is that Lee Sin has more mobility and you can actually kind of position to make sure that you line up Ari for the charm and sure. you know, line yourself up for the Sonic waves. I think it's a little bit harder to execute 2v2 kills, especially in something like Cassiopeia. So I think that's kind of why this game slowed down. And I'm just expecting to see something happen around this Rift Herald fight. Uh, where it's going to be all about getting Diego Ari these resets. Spawning in a couple seconds now. Dragon's also on the map, so alternatively to a fight at the Herald, could always see the handshake. Mm -hmm. One team go for one, the other go for, obviously, the other. Okay, Scary Jerry, airborne for a little bit there. Dashing gets out before the chain chomps come down. The trade. And damage on the Zyko means the UST win out on the trade. Well done. Dardox here as well. That could be enough for them to just push this wave in and make sure they take the dragon. As Porsche also burning TP on that top side. Uh, oh, in fact, okay. Robbie's actually rotated over. This was spotted on a ward by MU, and that's going to be enough to actually force Scary Jerry and Psycho off the wave. I like this much better than trying to posture for the dragon. Just start denying Jinx. Get Shogo a point. Now, okay, Ooh, there we go. Psycho goes in. Probably didn't expect Robbie Bob there. You have to imagine. So Zyko punished now, get back nearby, so is Odd Orange. Odd Orange is just trying to get to the turret. That's the only place that you're safe right now. USC will take their kill and get out. Scary Jerry denied a wave as well, so well done here. I like how Robbie Bob using that mid prio, able to get here first, gets get back out of the lane too. They can pick up the dragon afterwards after they already get an advantage for themselves. Really well played by University of St. Thomas. Dardike won't have much help right now, and Odd Orange is yeah, coming matter. around. Does Odd Orange go for a crazy steal? We did see Dardok try this in game number two himself, but nope, it's secured. Dardok gets his team that first blood. Over to Robbie Bob and the first objective. 
And I, I really have to credit Robbie Bob. I, I think a lot of the series has come down to mid lane priority. Keep in mind that game too, you know, Annie had that early push, enabled Maryville to get some early objectives. Mm -hmm. This again is a matchup where Get Back had that counter pick, and Robbie Bob has just been playing out the first couple waves so well that he actually had move against the Cassiopeia here. It was spotted, but Psycho's only level five. UST used their level six advantage to make sure they pick up the kill and deny Scary Jerry. Most important part about this comp, making sure that that Jinx gets behind and can't get those three resets. Instead, resets mm -hmm. are going over to the Viego Ari. And while we always like to praise Robbie Bob when he does pull out those AD champions in the mid lane, this is part of why he has this, you know, kind of reputation as the control mage mid laner. When you talk about mids pushing a wave, roaming elsewhere on the map, Robbie Bob is very comfortable doing plays like that. And that's a textbook example yeah. that we just saw there to net himself that first kill. Doesn't have the Lost Chapter himself yet either. Gonna be going towards. Still looks like uh, Everfrost as the first build here. Has the Lucidity Boots though, so we'll just be able to throw out more abilities each fight. We might get one here at the Herald. Yeah, Psycho's trying to leech six off the mid wave, and before Psycho has six, MU, they're tickling it, but they can't really start it fully. Uh, so you can see Daption is here. He already has that ult ready to go, and Psycho's just trying to hover. He should get six and a few minions. Yeah, okay, so he picks it up there. Now MU could possibly look and look out for the dredge line combo Ooh. into ult, and most importantly, the ground from get back. Nautilus, Cassio, whoever Nautilus hooks in will get yeah. grounded by Cassio, and that's where they those members will pop. Looks like UST actually gonna be aware of that. Instead, they might actually look to get the kill on the get back. Oh, jump over the wall, plus the charm. Follow up with Daption. Oh, nice petrifying gaze from get back to keep himself alive. And the Mega Death Rocket as well. Daption and Robbie Bob are in danger. Zyko should have the dredge line coming off cooldown shortly. There it is. Not enough damage though. That's heal from Daption to keep oh. Robbie Bob alive. A game of inches. But you can see the power there of the Nautilus plus Cassio combo as it was a nice opener from UST, but Cassio stymies it in their tracks. Now the one positive, Rift actually wasn't taken. So MU pulled off of that to try and help out with the play uh, that their teammates were making. And also they got Flash out of Cassio. So now I'm looking for Dardoch to actually visit mid, maybe set up a three man and try and take the snake down. Yeah, they didn't flash from either Daption or Robbie Bob. That was the uh, Spirit Rush that got Robbie Bob over the initial wall. But now it has teleported into the bot lane to shove this in, answering Scary Jerry. And as now Shogo will rotate down there. So now we can see the rotation where Robbie Bob goes up towards the Herald. Let's see if USC actually want to go for the play. Because right now, Dardoch's not on that side of the map. He's linking up with the support. The Viego plus the Rakan yeah. can also be a big threat. I will say a bit curious to actually see the Gale Force out of Shogo. I, I, I know that... Um, it's useful to dodge out on Mega or space the Jinx, but I thought that Kraken would be a little bit more valuable mm. given that you are going to have to deal with uh, that Nautilus Assault no matter what. Just taking the damage could be really big. But... Oh, okay. Big Feather Recall. Chunk on the Scary chunk. Jerry. That's Ghost U still has the Flash. They gotta stop but the Robbie wave Bob here. yet again. They gotta stop the wave here. They shoved the wave mid. They don't catch the bot wave. And Scary Jerry is alive for right now. Odd Orange is nearby. Get back is hovering close. Odd Orange over the wall with Zyko. MU doesn't want this. They they should not take this. The fact that they just lose Gromp and get out is actually a big win for Maryville. As yeah. Get Back and get to that midway first, they take a fight there. I heavily favor UST, given that Get Back would have been their second. Down a level, down Flash as well. I think the fact they just got out with a little bit of a chunk on Scary Jerry and lost Gromp was a big win for Maryville. And the fact that Robbie Bob, even though, yes, that was another shove into a roam, is no longer in the lead in this ES department. Get back yeah. has completed the Rod of Ages, still stacking up towards that Ceres. Yeah. The Cassiopeia has not been hard punished despite the early game feeling like it was so heavily Robbie Bob favor. I think the game plan now for St. Thomas is try and stack up these dragons. It's very clear that they have that bot lane priority, but again, this game's a little bit of a different flavor given that UST, we don't feel like they have the scaling advantage. It's actually in the hands of Maryville. Yeah. And so, right now, Niles is the only member of Maryville with the gold lead as we pull this yeah. up. I, I think the game state for Maryville, I mean, being down 2k is not the dream, but honestly, I don't think it's terrible at the moment. Uh, where I'm really looking for them to try and open things up is going to be Niles in that side lane, and also Cassio as this game goes on, because once you get the two items, you cannot move Cassio. She gets too tanky and does too much damage, where even if you send two, it can be dangerous to take her out. Yeah. Uh, so I think Maryville is actually in an okay spot. I think the one negative for them is that they haven't been able to use top lane priority to take a Rift Herald for themselves. So looking to see if they can maybe change that coming up. I mean, Niles is still just doing fantastic on his own. Massive oh, yeah. advantage over Porsche. This is two games in a row now of the NAR versus the Grog. It seems like it's something he's very comfortable with. 
maybe we just see this for the rest of the series depending on what ust want to prioritize for the rest of their picks but he also got to a point last game where he was just unkillable tanky <laughs> so if we have the cassiopeia plus the nar and then a jinx on top of it that is a late game uh dream for it, maryville as they now start up the dragon here ust don't really seem like they're prepared for it yet this is a little bit risky shogo doesn't quite have ultimate and you do have teleport coming in okay. Porsche and Top laner Niles are coming in. Zyko oh, hits Bobby. the wall, misses. Daption lands a decent engage, but turned back on to. Hot Orange is down. So is Daption, but so is Zyko. So it's UST so far taking the fight. Bobby. They'll claim Niles' is life. Only the carries are left alive. They got nobody to peel for them, though. And that's a reset, yep. Viego. Nice team fight win for UST as they punish MU in the pit. Robbie played that fight really well, used his first cast of ultimate to actually get out of the Nautilus engage. Psycho caught a bit of the wall, and uh, he was blown in by Porsche, so he got blown up. First reset went to the side of St. Thomas. Diego gets so powerful after this, you can see the charm connects. Psycho misses the ult, catches the wall, puts himself in position to go down. And from there, I mean, Shogo was able to free hit. Get back doesn't put out quite enough damage yet. And when the resets come in for UST, they can keep on pushing forward and threaten the Jinx, they were, which they were able to do in the back half. He talks about the fact that the Zaya for Shogo, complete opposite from the Kaisa. You can self heal in those yep. fights. That's what happened right there. Shogo stayed alive, was able to land the DPS necessary. And again, Viego resetting. Yeah. Big threat. And I'm kind of surprised that they actually even opted into that fight because the AD itemization, I mean, Scary Jerry didn't have a mythic completed. Yeah. Shogo did. Uh, he got more fed off of that. Again, it was Leandres versus a stacking rod. We were talking about, hey, Cassio scales, Narc and Stale. You can kind of 1-3-1 one, one and make sure you can stretch the map and threaten in the side lane. But Groovy yeah. goes fine. You play into exactly what UST wants at this point of the game. I think that was a bad fight. Take from Maryville and UST were able to punish. The only thing I can imagine is perhaps Maryville had the read that, hey, they're going to be on the Herald. We can get this as a trade. But UST were hovering the bot side. Now they're on the Herald. Yeah. And Maryville are going to be put even further behind. So double objectives over the UST. I mean, they, they could have traded out the Herald for the Dragon 2. Niles was on it. Yeah. He actually TP'd into the fight. So I know that he had Mega, but uh, really surprised that MU took that fight. Again, don't feel like that was the best take for them. And now they're going to have to deal with the consequences of it. The way that Maryville plays their way out of this, stretch the map, utilize, get back, and Niles. They're both very strong solo lanes that can be self-sufficient. They are also the leaders of these teams, the ones that talk the most in comm. So I really hope that they can identify this and try and play their way out. Interesting to see the lane assignments. Maryville are keeping get back in the mid lane, putting Scary Jerry's Zyko top, while Niles has gone bot lane. So the nice. cast will not keep him under the turret as we get the old thumbs up emote. That is an alt burned as we'll see if Niles actually fishes for Omega against Porsche because Auto Orange is lying in wait as the duo bros trying to turn things around here. Hot Orange can look at yeah, Porsche here. And the wave's not quite pushing fast enough, plus Daption's here on the hover. So, calls off from Maryville, not going here for the dive. Go. But now we get the lane assignments proper. Get Back is in a side lane. It's still tough, though. Like, get Back's behind items against Ari, and things are still okay here for the side of UST. As long as Cassio uh, has flash down, they can actually attack that lane too. Get Back does have that flash available to him once again. Uh, but I think the game plan right now for UST, just utilize Zyra Khan to get mid prio and then uh, fog to whichever side you want to take. So at the moment, Dardock is sitting on that Rift Herald. They're fogging towards top. They're going to look to attack the Cassio. They can get, get back. Oh, Petrifying Gaze misses. Was winning out on the uh -oh. 1v1 at the moment. But it's not a fair fight. Nice Dardock has up. joined in. No oh. Gaze means that Get Back's taken down, predicting the flash. Dardock getting another kill. Oh, man, what is he all chatting after that one? That was a nice guess on the flash as he <laughs> just styles over Get Back, says, Get Back over here with that stun. Gonna take a turret for themselves. Scary Jerry can take some damage down in mid, but not even really. Just gonna trade out for the bot outer. And with this Herald being dropped, that's gonna be probably two turrets here for the side of St. Thomas. Zemu not even close to responding. Taking away the Krugs as well. That's big. The answer on the map right now is Odd Orange and Niles playing to the bot side. Niles will shove another wave in here. Odd Orange will take away the red buff, but this will be a second turret, presumably. Nobody answering from MU. There it is. Shogo getting all the gold. They can even trade out the top lane camps as Dardock so far ahead of Odd Orange. Again, these guys go way back. Odd Orange, jungler for Fox Academy when Dardock was the jungler for Echo Fox as these two work together. And Dardock 
Before Andy was like, you know, if I face out Orange in finals, I, I think I got some over him. You yeah. know, I, he knows that I'm better, right? I was yeah, the one that yeah, was that, starting. That was his him. exact words. Yeah. He knows I'm better. He knows I'm better. And again, game one felt that way. Game two, Otto Orange got the better of Dardock this time around. Dardock off to the races, but especially a difference in Shogo's performance. Didn't draft Ego, but the Kaisa into the Varus this time around, and his 3,000 gold ahead of Scary Jerry just picked up the Ooh. second completed item. Quick blades for the Zaya. As I mean, we're getting close to Baron spawning this dragon. You gotta manage or believe it's all Saint Thomas, especially given where we are on the map. As MU, they have three top. They're gonna looking to play through, get back, maybe attack Gragas. I think this is the only play they have available to them. But poor spots both solo laners in this side, so he should know that he can play safe. And UST, they're gonna take that mid outer and likely fog down, take this dragon as well. I think MU should keep playing towards this Herald. I, I Don't mean, fight it's... another dragon. You might as well just take the trade this time around. If they're on the dragon, it will take them a little bit of time. But actually, USD say we don't want the dragon. We're going to set up at the Herald instead. Uh, Baron's coming up here in five seconds, Steve. Oh, right. It, it, yeah. it, it ain't the Herald, man. We, we got this game. It's <laughs> a little accelerated. Bit a little bit bigger than the Herald. Yeah, it's accelerated a little bit faster than that. Uh, so USD is going to make sure that MU doesn't pull anything sneaky. They're still going to take the dragon for themselves as Porsche. And he's at the point where you can kind of manage the wave uh, against Nar, so things aren't that big of a deal anymore. And actually went out on some of that poke trade there. Yeah, yeah this is not Niles with the force of nature at this point in the game like it was last time around. So different. Ooh! Close from Scary Jerry, but that would have been big. Third dragon. That could have been real big. Uh, fortunately for the side of UST, able to pick that one up for themselves. So Soul Point acquired Soul on the table here. Ocean Soul won't be bad for them going up against the Jinx. Moving forward, help Kragas a little bit more in the lane, but at the moment, USD, they're actually just looking to shift this power down towards Get Back. Get Back doesn't have Flash. He does have two items, though. Robbie Bob has taken a long time flash. to reset here. Can Get Back outplay this. Has a Petrifying Gaze. Does not have the Flash like you highlighted, so he's locked down. Still tanky. Does not drain tank long enough, and that is another kill over to Dardock. Well played from UST, just punishing what is down and taking what is given to them as Get Back can't play defense against three as the Casio. Does have that Seraphs ready, and uh, Rod almost fully stacked, but he's going to be taken down again, and this gold lead for UST is too much for Maryville to How handle. How much gold does Robbie Bob have? Can we see before he backs? I, I want to take a look. He's been on the map for so long. We see the double items already completed for get back. Let's see what he ends up with. I'm going to guess see uh, what he buys. Cosmic Drive, maybe? Okay. Yeah. The Fiendish Codex. Okay, Zonius. Okay, just... All right, whatever. <laughs> Fiendish Codex to Zonius. Why not? I feel like there's going to be something else here. And, and another Fiendish Oh, okay. That was just straight wow. up a Zonius buy. Yeah, wow, okay. Uh, okay, he was sitting on 2.5k plus. Yep, oh boy. Well, um, that's pretty big, Ari. Might as well go defense when you're this far ahead. Prevent some of the plays you have yeah. uh, can be made on. When there's things like the Wukong, like the Nautilus, might as well prevent that yeah, you can't get zero one shot. You can't get Ari get pressed on. You can't suffer an R being pressed on you anymore from the Nautilus. Not that Ari is too much threat for that. The UST with that dragon being down. It is all about the top side of the map and the Baron now. And a death push from Maryville. They don't have many options right now. They are very far behind. But if UST miss position and just walk in here, uh, Zyko is maybe Ooh. trying to be a little bit of bait, but Daption's not taking it. Dardock's not taking it. So Maryville don't actually find any pick. Curiously enough, a wits end second uh, for Dardock's Diego. Hmm. Uh, you really only get value against the Cassio on this. Guess you expect to be diving that Cassio. Yeah, man, I guess <laughs> he really, really hates snakes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's scary. Not to be confused with Jerry. Um, <laughs> that's a whole nother story. That's terrible. Uh, we're we're going to move on to the Baron being started up here. Find the side of St. Thomas. That's already at half. Good chunk landing from Robbie Bob. Odd Orange already at half health himself. But this is going to get a little bit hairy. There's Robbie Stack Bob four. Look at Robbie Bob. Do they want to go for the fight? Big damage oh. on the Dardock. They do secure the Baron, but can they survive the re-engage? Zyko still has the depth charge. That's a teleport from Porsche. Flashes flash. over the Jinx uh, choppers. And Robbie Bob's still on the flank right now. Might have to back or teleport out of here. Could get chased down, but that is a successful Baron take from UST. Where's the TP? Do we see it being channeled anywhere? I mean, he's got the Baron recall. Oh. I think he can actually get Yeah, back. that's actually, that's faster than TP. Yeah. All right, good job, Robbie Bob. He gets out of there. Porsche. Ah, all right, he's going to cask away, and look at that, UST. They're running away with it. And the craziest thing to me, Cubby, is how one-sided this live audience is. When UST are pulling off these plays, it is silence out there. Yeah. Maryville win a fight, they explode. UST fighting as the uh, potential underdogs here from the fan perspective. I think I heard Chad, though. Shout out right there. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. 
I mean, St. Thomas, they need, they need their support as I think they've got some of the audience. And all they need right now, really, to wrap this game up, it's just the Ocean Soul as everything has gone their way in this. I, like, game two, for me, it was, you know, Maryville, they took winning lanes, able to execute. This time around, this is the first time that we've seen St. Thomas take some lane priority. Uh, you know, taking that Ari Diego trying to make plays and having that winning bot lane. They made really good use of that as, I mean, oh, yeah. This game went from what it felt like, you know, Dardock taking out Camp or two, Scary Jerry missing a wave or two, into three dragons, into heralds, and now into inhibitor turrets being taken right on time as USD. They've been dominating this one, and Maryville not even going to try to flank. They just have to hit the recall button. That's just an inhib being dropped. And we have said often already today how much we credit Maryville for having these macro decisions, playing the map correctly, you know, uh, forcing their opponents to make mistakes. Right now, it's UST running the map. They have actually been getting the better of Maryville everywhere since the 10 minute mark. They'll take the inhibitor. They will maybe take another turret here. Maryville will defend this one, but Dragon spawning 25 seconds and UST do control the access point to the river. Yeah. You can see Otto Orange trying to go around, see if he can find any angles as he's just going to take the crowd 15 seconds away from that Dragon spawning. UST. Oh, watch out, Psycho. Oh. oh, the dredge line gets him back to safety. Oh, has to flash still, and Dardock committing under the turret. And what turret? It's gone. Dardock with another kill. Has the reset. Now that's a Nautilus to maybe chase down more. UST oh. land a charm on a gift bag. Robbie Bob doing it again. And UST are exploding in this mid lane, or rather mid game. Popping off right now and taking down Maryville. I mean, they don't even want to take the dragon. They just want to end the game. Robbie misses his last charge. All the Niles. Niles is out. Hot Orange and Scary Jerry don't have a hope. UST, they don't need that soul. Wow. They just needed the one Baron and a couple of picks, and they will go up 2-1 in this series. A dominant, resounding comeback from UST after dropping game two, where they took losing lanes. They were pushed in. UST, they take some priority, and once they got a foothold in this game, it was over. A very different look from game two, where it felt like Maryville were getting their momentum. They were winning the bot lane. They were winning the jungle. This time around, UST right that wrong. And we saw a very different look from this squad. Maryville are gonna have to come back, or go back to the drawing board, come back, refresh with a different game plan, because that one did not work. I still really want to credit Robbie Bob with some of that early thing they had. I, I think that the fact that mid was actually so in favor of that Ari really enabled Dardock to make some of the plays he did, take some of the camps he did, and eventually attack Scary Jerry, because once he dropped a few of those waves, I, I thought that it was really well played by Daption and Shogo to get some chunks. Mm -hmm. That health bar ended up being a few waves in their favor, then ended up being a few plates in their favor, a couple drags in their favor, and USC just ran away with that one. And this play to end it, it looked cool to start for Zyko, but everyone from USD was there, and they are prepared to continue the dive. Taking down the Nautilus was just the first to fall. And I'm used to split here. Like, they're trying to find some sort of entrance into the dragon, but uh, then once that falls, you know, get back, trying to kill the wave. He gets picked off. Now it's a 5v3. Odd Orange, you know, he just gets back. Now, yeah, Rabiola goes in, but Nautilus is trying to stack up a Mega Bar. He ends up getting rooted and going down as UST is just one by one by one, and MU kind of fell apart at the end. Niles did not get the solo turret this time around. Was not just hard crushing Porsche. Honestly, it feels like Porsche might have just like learned how to play the Gragas in the he played, he played it a bit better this time. Played around. it a bit yeah. better. Was not getting just destroyed in the lane. So Niles wasn't tanky enough to absorb those kinds of plays. And that was also a big factor in that one. I think Porsche is really stepping up, which happened again last year, where a lot of oh. people were expecting Niles to just hard smash every single lane every single time. Porsche is coming back in. I think for that one, just the fact that that first turret fell in favor of UST, and then MU couldn't set up yeah. that 1-3-1. Once they did get back, was a little bit behind. They made sure that he got even further behind, too. Uh, I just th I think St. Thomas just ran a clinic that game. That was really, really sound play from them. The how they played off of just small chunk, small priority, turned that into so much more. That's what we love to see out of our challengers level teams. Yeah. UST able to do that here in the collegiate finals. Really good to see. And now they're on the precipice, Cubby. One game away, and UST are back to back collegiate champions. That has not happened since the first two years of CLOL. So we're at match point. Maryville is in trouble in this series. Let's head on over to the Dean's office for a hearing. 
Welcome back to uh, the Dean's office. Two to one, St. Thomas up against Maryville. Uh, Are they gonna? They're gonna call me in soon. No, like that. Uh, hey man, you're in the office. <laughs> oh, he's the Dean. We're, he's he's you know we're, we're hearing from him. Send it. Winnie, thank you for being a uh, standout <laughs> student. I appreciate it. No worries. Not me, though. And welcome back. Uh, it's glad to be back, you know? Great. Back in the dean's office. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to get, to get praise for the dean or roasted. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. He's, he's good. He's good. All right. Well, one thing that was great was Dardock rolling off a huge, huge play here that really had to get inside the mental. It was up on the top side of the map to get back, uh, getting caught out, but then Dardock making a huge play. Yeah, I think uh, there were a couple of ways he could have played this. He could have led it with the Czar, but I mean, he did the thing that Dardock would do the most, had the ego showed Ooh. in here, predicted the flash, definitely all, all, some all chat banter right after that. But yeah, I mean, it just shows the confidence that they have. Yeah, I mean, Dardock knew either he predicts a flash and looks like a beast, or he misses and his mental warfare. You know, he, like he's just in your head. Like that's what that play is all about, right? There were like a bunch of different ways that you could have killed Get Back there. He chose the most stylish one. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he did. And that leads to Dean Gon's favorite game that we played all day long. Guess who said the all <laughs> chat edition? Uh, so let's fly all the different answers of what Dardock said after that play happened, which was pretty awesome. It could be one out of four different answers here. It is at least one. Was it nervous, jungle diff? You guys play are being seen, or your guys' play is being seen 10 years in advance, I fear, or <laughs> TL Egg Chef. Okay, it's not that the, the, the I fear one because there's just there's too much going on in the game. Right. You can't type. Not time. Zardox more to the point than that, right? You <laughs> Look know? At the well, graphic is just so. Much. <laughs> you can see why I had a hard time reading it because I was like, <laughs> looks like Zardox skipping English a little bit there, but that's okay. All right, it's one out of one. Two, three, or four of these were said. Which one do you think it was? I mean, I'll put the whole house on nervous. Uh, I know Dardock, he's uh, get to the point. He says the things even if it's not directly about, you know, the play he made. But, I mean, he, he's definitely trying to get under their skin for sure. All right, Grapes? Uh, yeah, Jungle Diff, like, he's not playing against. That was that kill wasn't against Odd Orange. It was against yeah. Get Back. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Good luck, have fun. That's what you type at the beginning. And I don't know if these players are going to be typing that <laughs> at all this series. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it's number one as well. Winnie's confidence has inspired me. I, I've got to go put my house on nervous question mark too. Like I can't sell my boy out like that. So. Well, if you three would put the house on it, you would have all half a house because he also said the one that you would think the least, your guys' plays being no seen. Way. No way. Advance, I fear. He said he typed out the whole thing as well. Obviously, he knew That's they were bad. on a reset, so he had time to type <laughs> that out. But the mental warfare on full display here by Dardock UST. He took it so seriously, he wrote a whole book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely would not want to compete against him in Type Racer if that's what he's ever doing. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, props to him. That, that, that's a good one. Well, that's honestly the most impressive play that we saw all game. Typing yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I mean, that, the, the Nautilus hook was pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. Let's reel it back into the action on the Rift. It was a... Uh, a focus that you asked for more here, Winnie, where you wanted to see more plays down on the bottom side of the map, and then finally we get this huge, huge fight in front of the Drake. Yeah, so I, I think for this fight, Mariver was a bit preemptious, looking for something like this. Uh, if you saw the item difference at this point of the game, Shogo was actually on his Mythic, whereas Jerry wasn't. And also with the setup, UST was able to get a good angle from the bots of the river. They were able to, you know, find their flanks. And it, it didn't look like MU knew what they wanted to do. I feel like they had options they could have turned, but there wasn't a line they wanted to do so. Um, as well, they were trying, trying to finish the Drake, maybe trying to bail out of that situation. But yeah, I think it was a bit, you know, early. They weren't really forced to be put themselves in that situation. Unfortunately, they didn't. Those are the things that, you know, they happen, that kind of choices you can make on stage but USC took advantage of it and you saw them ride it all the way to the end. And yep. I think this was the kind of situation that goes to show Maryville is so often in CLOL our early game team. We talk all the time about how they have the best early game in the region amongst collegiate teams. They had the scaling comp this time around. They had the Jinx Casio. They were the ones that needed to play it a little slower. And I think they got a little too antsy in that play as when he highlighted. I want to credit Robbie Bob a lot in that game on the Ari. I mean, oh, yeah, we missed man. the, we, we didn't get the replay of the first blood, but getting priority against get back there and running down to impact the map first. We mentioned that bot lane was going to be big. Not only was Darduck down there, Robbie Bob also was. Yeah, just to add on that real quickly, just because I think that actually is an important point. It put USD in a, you know, advantageous early game position. And he was forced to actually blind into that matchup. We saw get back's answer. Didn't look good. So we're going to have to see if he'll uh, have something else for this next game. So you've been sitting us here with the draft. We know how we felt in drafts one and two, where it was like, I don't know, Maryville. It feels like you're making it tough on yourself. This one, I think we said we liked Maryville's draft more. Didn't quite work out the way that we thought. What needed to change other than, hey, playing a little slower, we're on the scaling side. 
I'm not really sure. I feel like overall, like, it seemed like a good play. I mean, I think, again, it just goes back to the mid lane. I, a large part going into this series was um, get back probably gets the edge over Robbie Bob, at least in laning phase. And so Robbie Bob's job is, you know, sit back and then team fight really well. However, you saw there, Robbie Bob actually was able to get the early game priority. And that is, if that's happening in UST is all firing on all cylinders. And that's the thing too, when he highlighted in our threat level last time around, whichever jungler is gonna be able to get more space on bottom, is probably gonna be the one to take over the game. We saw that that lane was our Armageddon, For sure. if you will. Both junglers, to their credit, did a great job of playing around bot, but it was Dardoch that got that first blood. It was Dardoch that got that advantage. And I think that did factor in the mythic as Winnie highlighted. So, I mean, Maryville just recognizing their power points might be something we need to keep our eyes on going into game four. Yeah. Well, blue side for Maryville. So they swap back on over. They will take the first pick. How do you feel like the priority moves? Again, we've seen this Milio band just constantly get knocked out, which yeah. means you don't have to worry about the Karthus. You've seen priority switch between some of the junglers. Where do you go here, Winston? So Maryville might have two routes. I think game two, they kind of stuck to their guns, uh, except for changing, you know, with the first pick by, uh, putting auto on something comfortable, and they, you know, change their bot lane matchups, go out, get back on that Annie. Things like that will be open with a lot of the set bands, or, you know, it's game three. Maryville might think they need to switch on the up. They might leave open that Karthus, force that Melio center Karthus matchup we've been hinting about, um, which would obviously be, you know, crazy to see. Maybe it's something that, you know, they think they can obviously, since they won game two, they might not have to go that route. Um, but yeah, I think we'll see a lot more of that Annie Vi, maybe Annie Wukong. Um, and then, yeah, just trying to get Jerry on, or scare Jerry on that Varus, you know, able to get priority, able to compete in that ball lane. Winnie, one more question for you, just in terms of the mentality of a squad who is on the back foot for Maryville. You know, you get your second, you're in game two, you get your win, so you feel okay, but now your back's against the wall. What are you saying to the guys to keep the spirits up and get back in it? Yeah, so I mean, I, I individually, I've competed against Maryville for a while now, and I most recently played against them in the NACL uh, promotional tournament where we played them in a best of five. That thing went uh, the full distance, but crazy. we actually right. led, Great we best led, of five. We led that series 2-0, right? Yeah. And I remember talking to them you know, they felt comfortable, regardless of the situation that we're in now. 2-1, not as bad as 2-0. I'm sure that they are going to be able to... They're kind of the type of people that they don't need someone else to tell them what they need to do. They have that confidence. They know what they're capable of doing. And I'm sure that they aren't going to let that, like, kind of being in this hole get them down. I'm sure they're going to come in with a strong game plan back on blue side. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot more competitive game like we saw in the first two. Well, hopefully we'll get to see that in game four, maybe get bonus game number five. Winnie, thank you so much for yeah. all of the insights and playing along with all the games that we had today. Congratulations on fantastic season and looking uh, forward to what you do in the league space moving forward. Appreciate you, brother. I appreciate it. It's been fun. All right. Hey, guys, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, will it be history making for UST or will we roll out the silver scrapes? We'll find out in game number four. Yeah, I can look. Watch her, watch not, 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 not. Wukong, 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 Wukong died. They got a reset. I got not, I got not. Watch, watch, watch. No, 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 no,